Hello and welcome to this video on three things that you should not do with missing data. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including structural equation models, factor models, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I teach for Quantfish. In this video I want to talk about three key things that you should not do when you have missing data. Now missing data is very common in social science research and other research. There are a variety of reasons why certain data points may be missing. For example, there are certain sensitive questions maybe that people don't want to answer or they simply miss the questions or they run out of time on a test or in a longitudinal study they move away and there's drop out or they get sick and they can't come. And so there are a variety of reasons and almost every study has to deal with some amount of missing data and it makes people anxious and obviously it is um, a concern and um, it is a reason to um, maybe not to become anxious but to become concerned and to think about what should I do and that's where so say the, the problems often start because there's a lot of um, anecdotal kind of uh, knowledge out there or um, uh, beliefs about missing data and um, techniques that have been used for a long time to address missing data and so people are uncertain about what they should do and oftentimes they do the wrong thing or they use the exactly wrong techniques that make things worse. Now, why is it a problem, first of all, when we have missing data? Obviously, it reduces our sample size. It reduces the amount of information that we have in our data. We don't have the same amount of information um, compared to the situation where we have complete data because obviously there's uncertainty about the scores that are missing. We don't know what the scores are because they're not there. And so that is a problem that can, for example, lead to a reduction in statistical power. So when you want to conduct tests of statistical significance, for example, a t-test for comparing means across groups, or you have a regression analysis where you want to look at the statistical significance of regression coefficients, or you have a structure equation model where you're interested in path coefficients and other estimates, then the statistical power can be reduced due to um, the reduced sample size due to missing data. But that's not the only problem and perhaps not the worst problem. Worse than that, the missing cases could introduce bias potentially depending on what kind of method you use to address missing cases and also depending on the missing data mechanism, which is one of my points that I will discuss later on. So missing data definitely is a concern because it could lead to a reduction in statistical power. In the better case, in the worst case, it could also introduce bias where the estimates are no longer representative for the population that you want to study because there's a systematic dropout, for example, where certain cases are missing that would change the results if they were present. And that's probably what makes people anxious is this um, issue that you don't know. There's this un unknown component. We don't know what these cases would have been like. And so should we then use the other data from these cases? And another thing that makes people anxious is whether they can impute um, missing values because that kind of a little bit looks like um, you would be cheating, right? Like, okay, you don't have these values from these individuals and now you're making them up in some way and you're putting in values for those missing scores. And it makes a lot of people uncomfortable and they feel like it's kind of like fabricating data or making up data or cheating or something like that. And so we'll see that that's actually not really the case if you're doing imputation or other missing data handling techniques, right? So let's 
um, jump in and let's talk about the first thing that you should not do with missing data. And that is delete cases with missing scores. Now, this is something that makes many people more comfortable. They feel better about it uh, for some reason they think okay when i delete those cases with missing scores then i have complete cases and then everything is fine because then i don't have to deal with those cases that have missing scores i'm not imputing data so nobody can accuse me of cheating or making up data and that's why many people choose this and also because it's easy many programs many software programs for statistical analysis such as spss have list wise or pairwise deletion as their primary or default options with many techniques so that you don't even have to do anything they automatically use list wise deletion of cases with missing data and in the results section you may not even really notice that too much now why is this a bad thing why should you not do this and probably absolutely not do this ever because it is a more or it implies a more restrictive assumption about the underlying missing data mechanism than more appropriate techniques such as full information maximum likelihood estimation or multiple imputation of missing values and specifically the listwise and pairwise deletion methods imply that the mechanism is missing completely at random data where there's absolutely nothing so say related to your variables that determines that uh, the cases are missing. For example, you randomly lost data, like randomly um, data got lost and it has nothing to do with the variables that you're studying. That would be missing completely at random data. However, in many situations, missing data are not missing completely at random. They are systematically missing, but they may be, it may be related to variables that you have in your data set, such that the mechanism of missing at random data can still be satisfied. And missing at random data is a less restrictive assumption. Now, as I said previously, listwise and pairwise deletion methods imply that missingness is completely random, and that's often not the case. And so then when you apply these to situations where you only have missing at random data, but not missing completely at random data, then you can introduce bias. So you not only lose statistical power due to the deletion of cases, but you also potentially introduce bias in your analysis because the remaining cases may no longer be representative of the population. And so therefore these techniques should be avoided almost completely. So maybe when you have thousands of cases and you only have a handful of missing scores, then maybe it doesn't matter. Or when you are absolutely sure that you have missing completely at random data and you don't have a lot of missing data, then maybe it doesn't matter. But in general, these deletion methods that unfortunately are the default in many statistical software programs, those are not good and they should not be used. Absolutely not. So to say that is a bad idea. You lose information, you lose power and you potentially introduce bias in your analysis and you make a more restrictive assumption about the missing data mechanism than with other techniques. And that is something that many people don't realize. They think that these other techniques like multiple imputation and full information, maximum likelihood estimation, that they make more restricted assumptions about the missing data mechanism. And that's not the case. That is really not the case. So keep that in mind. You're better off using that than listwise and pairwise deletion, which is more restrictive. Second, Another problem is that many people don't even look at the patterns or mechanisms that underlie their missing data. So they will simply say, oh, there are some missing cases and we're going to delete them. And they, they don't even look at who is missing, what, for what reason potentially, what patterns of missingness do we have, what could explain that, are there variables in the data set that are correlated with dropout or with uh, missingness, are there, for example, demographic variables such as age or gender or SES, socioeconomic status or something like that, that correlate with certain things where, for example, some people may not be willing to 
give their income as a variable or an estimate of their income, maybe due to age, maybe older people feel awkward about talking about their income uh, or other other groups may be ashamed to report their income or something like that. And so you want to study that. You want to find out why are cases missing, which cases are missing, for which variables, what could be the reason. And that often gives you a hint too as to whether the mechanism is missing completely at random or missing at random or missing not at random. So study that. Look at correlates of missingness. Create missing data indicators for your variables and then correlate those missing data indicators with variables that you have in your data set. And that might help you find so-called auxiliary variables that may explain or at least may correlate with the missingness and then show you, okay, those are certain groups, certain demographics that are less likely to respond to X, Y, or Z, or the certain demographics that are more likely to drop out over time in a longitudinal study. And so it's a good idea to study that. When you have longitudinal data, often the previous score is correlated with dropout. For example, when you study something like um, health and then somebody is in bad health, at time one, then maybe at time two, they didn't come back because they were sick. Or in elderly people, maybe they died, or maybe they were hospitalized and couldn't come back. And so then you would know, based on the previous score, you would know that's missing at random data because you have the information about poor health. You can include that in your model when you impute the data or when you use full information maximum likelihood estimation. You can include that auxiliary information or that previous score information and then you can avoid bias and you can improve your statistical power. So definitely study that. Study patterns of missing data. Study the, miss the likely missing data mechanism to find out why are the scores missing and is there something in my data that is related that I can use as auxiliary information to establish missing at random data. Third is, is a problem that um, many people uh, use so-called single imputation techniques. So that's um, at least not listwise deletion or pairwise deletion. So at least they're including the information from incomplete cases by replacing their scores that are missing with something else. However, single imputation techniques where you use just one number to replace the missing score, such as, for example, the mean or last observation carried forward where you use the previous score and then impute that as a single value, they are also very problematic. They can cause bias, they can cause a reduction in the variance of the variable and also important, they don't contain or don't provide any information about the variability of the scores so the uncertainty, so to say, that arises due to missingness and because there's only one score imputed as if we were certain that the mean, for example, is the right score. However, we're absolutely not certain and the mean is just an estimate and probably a poor estimate in many cases. And so the uncertainty that is associated with the mean, which has a standard error in your sample, is not taken into account when you use sim single imputation techniques. And then that messes up your statistical inference, meaning your standard errors, your tests of significance, confidence intervals, and so on. So single imputation techniques are a bad idea. And they're also tedious. So then you have to calculate the mean, you have to put it, put it in. It's not necessary. There are more straightforward techniques that can be used that are better, that perform better. And so single imputation techniques can introduce bias even with missing completely at random data. So stay away from those. I would say there's almost never a reason to use a single imputation technique for missingness. Those are a bad idea and I would totally avoid them, especially since other methods are easier and have been shown to perform better. Now, what are the methods that you should be using? Something that is very readily available now in many software programs is full information maximum likelihood estimation. Many programs for structural equation modeling and factor analysis allow you to use full information maximum likelihood estimation, which does not impute missing data and instead uses all of the information from 
the com from the uh, available data, from the data that is there, from also from incomplete cases in the estimation of the parameters. And full information maximum likelihood estimation also allows you to include auxiliary variables. So if you have missing data correlates, variables such as demographic variables or other variables that correlate with missingness or dropout. You can include them in the analysis in the background as so-called auxiliary variables without um, them disturbing your model or cluttering up your statistical model. And then this information about missingness can be taken into account. So it's very convenient. For example, in M plus, everything is automated. All you need to do is list the auxiliary variables, specify your statistical model and and everything will be done for you. And you can estimate many of the conventional statistical analyses in programs for structural equation models, such as, for example, regression analysis. A t-test, a t-test for independent samples is a special case of a regression model. And ANOVA, ANOVA is also a special case of regression. So you can do all these types of analyses in programs such as, for example, M plus or LAVAN, which use full information maximum likelihood estimation, allow you to include auxiliary variables in the model. Also programs now make it very easy to use multiple imputation. Again, M plus makes this very easy so that you can do everything in one step and it will already aggregate the results across the multiple imputations. It allows you to take into account auxiliary variables and summarizes the fit statistics and the parameter estimates for you, gives you estimates of the uncertainty that arises due to missing values. So it's very, very convenient and there's not really a reason to go back to these old school, so to say, approaches that um, use deletion methods or single imputation. Those modern missing data handling techniques such as full information maximum likelihood and multiple imputation are so readily available and so easy to use now that really there's no excuse, so to say, not to use them. Now, what about my initial point that many people feel uncomfortable using multiple imputation because, or any kind of imputation, because they think, oh, we're making up data, we're fabricating data, we're putting something in that's not really observed. Now, those are concerns that really apply to the single imputation techniques, in my opinion, because then you really are putting something in that shouldn't be there and something that is probably almost certainly a poor estimate for a lot of the missing values and that can cause a lot of problems and that really can cause bias in your um, results. So that is to be avoided, but multiple imputation is different. It does not, these concerns do not apply to multiple imputation, at least not if you can reasonably assume missing completely at random data or missing at random data. And so then multiple imputation performs just fine and performs better than the other techniques. And that's been shown in various simulation studies. And also the underlying mathematical theory is very, very solid and not, it's not magic. It's not a scam. It's not something that means you are cheating or making up data or something like that. So you can be very calm applying these methods. There's a lot of literature out there and I'm linking some of it below in the description that clearly backs this up. And so there's no reason to um, assume that you would be cheating or that you would be doing something wrong. On the contrary, if you use methods like full information, maximum likelihood or multiple imputation, that is the state of the art and that's what everybody should be doing instead of using these other methods that make things worse. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about missing data handling. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a workshop that I teach on missing data analysis with M+. And I'll see you next time.